Hi, and welcome to the first episode of Irtiza versus Mustafa Sports Talk. My name's Irtiza, and I'm here with my brother Mustafa. We decided to start our podcast because we've been listening to a lot of other podcasts, and usually they discuss the greatest of all time. And from the podcast we've been listening to, they are our inspiration, but usually we hear the same repeated names. Not to disagree with them, but their names like Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, Serena Williams, Tom Brady. But, you know, there's a lot of names we don't hear of. So this podcast, we started to try to bring and include all sports, international sports as well, or in single player sports as well. We want to bring up names like Usain Bolt, Michael Phelps. We want to bring up names of cricketers. We want to bring up names of NHL players, especially as Canadians, like why Wayne Gretzky is never put up there. So this is one of the reasons why we decided to start our own podcast. And I hope you enjoy it. Now I'm going to pass it on to my brother Mustafa. Hi everyone, my name is Mustafa. As my brother stated, we started this podcast to try to include all sports in one platform. Another reason why we're going to be different than other sports shows and a podcast is that we're going to relate medicine with sports. We're going to bring in medical professionals, doctors, chiropractors, and discuss the mental health aspect of sports, concussion in sports, injuries in sports, and how they all relate to each other. So now you know a bit of what our podcast is going to be about. We're going to get right into the first episode. We're going to just start off by saying who we think the greatest of all time is. Or can you even say that there's a greatest of all time? Because each sport is different. So I personally think you got to put Muhammad Ali near the top. Because everything he did outside the ring as well. I think that should count for like to be considered the greatest of all time. Is what you also did outside the your sport. If you help your community. If you help your people. But I also think names such as Usain Bolt and Michael Phelps should be brought up. I've never heard those names in any sports shows as greatest of all time. I continuously keep hearing Jordan and Tom Brady. They are great, but I personally believe Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt are better because they're doing by themselves. Of course they have coaches, but they don't have a team to help them. Michael Jordan got helped by Steve Kerr. Michael Jordan did not win without Scottie Pippen. Tom Brady has a whole team around him. He only plays offense. He doesn't play defense. Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt is is just them. There's no one to help them. If they have an off day, they're not going to win. While these team sport athletes can have an off day, but they can still win because the team can help them. So I personally believe that individual sport athletes such as those two are should and are better athletes than the team sport athletes. Even though I, I respect Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, and all athletes, but it's much harder, in my opinion, to win as an individual athlete than it is to win with a team. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me just stop you right there. First of all, I definitely agree with Muhammad Ali. That's my personal favorite athlete as well, and who I do think is the greatest athlete of all time, if it can even be compared for different sports. But... When you say single-player athletes, like Usain Bolt, like Michael Phelps, first of all, you're forgetting to bring up other athletes that also play single-player sports, like tennis athletes, tennis uh, players. But uh, I'm going to let that one go for now. When you say a single-player athlete, a a single-sport athlete, is better than a team athlete because they're not getting help from their teammates, I completely disagree with that. The reason why I disagree with that is because a team sport you have to not only play at your best capability, but you have to be able to mesh your skills and your knowledge and be able to not just make yourself better, but make your entire team better. And that's what separates team athletes uh, from single uh, sport athletes. Now, I'm not saying Usain Bolt, Michael Phelps, Serena Williams, Roger Federer aren't great in what they do. They definitely are, and they could be considered the greatest of all time. But in my opinion... Athletes like Tom Brady, I understand he only plays one part of the uh, field, but he elevates the game of everyone around him with his knowledge. I also believe that sports like athletes like Michael Jordan, you said Steve Kerr saved him with a shot. Yes, yes he did. But who put him in that position to hit the shot? Who gave him the confidence to hit the shot? The best athlete on your uh, team, the best player on your team, elevates the game of everyone else. And since we're discussing... Team athletes, I think there's one athlete that's usually not brought up, and that's Wayne Gretzky. 
Wayne Gretzky is arguably the greatest athlete of all time. He holds all the records. He's an, he and and here's what makes him different. You can say yes, the goaltender saved him. Yes, maybe he got an, uh, his defense played better one game or not. But he elevates the game of everyone else. When in a team sport, when one athlete is so good, the entire uh, op, uh, opposing team's uh, defense is focused on that athlete. But but wait wait hold up, I still you're not getting the point. My my point is that they can get help. These athletes cannot get help. Another thing I'm trying to say is that. But, but, you, but it's not just about getting help. It's about elevating your teammates. Oh, you that's can't elevate your teammates if you're playing by yourself. That's the point I'm trying to make. You're making the point that a team athlete is somehow worse than a single sport athlete because they have people to help them. But I'm telling you it's the opposite. They're better, they're better because they can now elevate other teammates. Okay, they can just elevate let, their... Just let me finish. Just let me finish. You got to let me finish first. My point was that it's harder to win if you're doing it by yourself. Of course, you have coaches to help you, but at the end of the day, it's, it's you. Another thing is that Usain Bolt and Michael Phelps, for example, inclu- and tennis players, but for example, they play people. Of course, the other sports have people all around the world too, like basketball has people from Europe and Asia, but they compete with everyone. There's, there's like one Olympics. In the Olympics, you compete with the best of the best. NBA is the best league. NFL is the best league, but they're not playing against the, say, the Spanish league or the Chinese basketball league. They're only playing against the NBA teams. So they have less competition. Everyone in this world can possibly compete in the Olympics and run. I know it's hard, but they gotta. You can try and achieve it. But growing up, you can always have a dream of trying to be the next Usain Bolt. Because it's not as expensive to play, like to do track and field as it is to maybe play football or maybe to play hockey. So more people can do the specific sport. That's my point, that they have more competition. Hold on, let me stop you right there since you brought up that point. Then what about people playing sports like cricket and soccer? It's played by uh, people that are coming out of extreme poverty as well. Those are team sports. Yeah. They require equipment. I also agree that those sports are harder than, um, for example, NBA and um, NFL and NHL. Because in my opinion, I know every sport is hard, but they have less competition. It's practically North America. Especially, you're practically playing, you're not playing the best leagues around the world. Well, that's not true. Basketball, hockey are not just North America. Yeah. And and that goes for... I mean, football is more of North America than any other sport. Even if you take a, a look at MLB, uh, baseball, you take a look at uh, NBA basketball, you take a look at NHL hockey. First of all, the next best hockey league is KHL. That's Russian. Yeah. That's not North American. The next best uh, uh, league in basketball is the European League. May, the European League, maybe the Spanish League. Uh, that's not that's not North American. And as far as baseball, the next best league to baseball is the Japanese leagues. Yeah, but that's my point. My point is that they only compete with one league. But Michael Phelps and Usain Bolt, for example, or Roger Federer, compete with every person around the world. I know in NBA there's European players, there's there's players from all over the world. But some players that are really really good don't make that don't come to the NBA because they might feel more comfortable in their home country they might not be able to speak English and might not make the transfer over no or they might be getting no paid. no let me stop you right there they getting paid more or feeling comfortable okay that's a separate issue but they're getting paid more from the KHL or the European leagues the reason is because they're not good enough to make that money in the NBA is if they were that good enough to make the same money or be just as good in the NBA or the NHL or the MLB, they would be getting more money because the NBA, NHL, and MLB pay more than the KHL, than the European leagues, than the Japanese, South Korean leagues. They pay more. So the best of the best come to play in these leagues, but in their respective sports. I understand what you're saying, that other people may stay there because their home is there, they want to stay home, they don't want to go, but I don't think that's true of people in the uh, elite athletes 
in those sports that are in their prime want to play for these leagues. And there's a reason why they want to play for the leagues because these are where the best players are. And, and, and you're kind of straining off the topic of single-player sports and uh, uh, multiplayer sports. I'm talking about a team sport athletes should be considered just as good if not better because their teammates said he or she has to elevate. No, but they have less competition. That's where you're not understanding. For example, a poor kid growing up in maybe India or Pakistan or anywhere, China, they cannot sometimes dream about making the NFL. They might not even know what the NFL is. First, it's not as popular because it's not worldwide. Like cricket is more popular worldwide and uh, and soccer. So they they might not be able to afford playing NBA or playing um, NFL. So <laughs> let me finish. So they have to, but they can always try to be the next Usain Bolt. But I, I, I get that. I get that for hockey. I get that for uh, uh, American football. But you can't say that for basketball. Of course you can, can take, take a look at all the African athletes that are in the league right now. Take a look at Serge Ibaka. And be a champion. Came yeah, from Africa. But he's one of the rare people that made it from there. He's not everyone makes from there. Because it, they, they have less opportunity than people growing up in North America. But anyone growing up poor or rich can practically try to be the next Usain Bolt. Of course, not everyone can be the next Usain Bolt. But it's not as expensive to play those type of games as it is to play some of these team sports, specifically hockey and football. So we're going to have to continue this next week. Stay safe.